because I don't want you to think that we're uh, bowing in fear to the devil about this stuff. And that's what a lot of the connection that happens with this, people think back to the movie The Exorcist, right? And it's like, oh, no, I don't want to get involved in that stuff. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about living a life with a firm foundation like we sang, I'm going to build my life upon Christ. He's going to show me all the counterfeit, bankrupt stuff that I believed, all the lies that I came in agreement with before I knew him. I got saved, and I'm starting to read the Word, but I'm not immersed in the Word. I'm not mature yet. I still, like when I first got saved, I was still listening to rock and roll music because nobody was telling me that I shouldn't listen to Led Zeppelin until my mother came around. The Grateful Dead had a song called The Friend of the Devil. <laughs> I think it would have been kind of obvious to me, right? But, you know, I, I was missing all that. She goes, friend of the devil? You're a Christian now. You're not a friend of the devil. I'm like, oh, good point, Ma. You know? <laughs> One more record in the garbage. You know what records were? That's an old school thing. <laughs> I, I didn't know. You know, the Lord had to reveal to me that whole sanctification process, that when you're opening yourself up through music, you're opening the door to devils coming in. And that's why kids are committing suicide left and right. You think that's a curse? Death? Yeah. Well, shut the door to that thing, right? That's not legalism. That's common sense. <laughs> All right. So what does Jesus say in John 16, 33? These things I've spoken to you, that's Jesus speaking to me and you, that in me you have what? Even if you're dealing with stuff, even if you're going through things and you're not seeing the answer, he'll give you peace in the midst of it. And in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I, Jesus says, have overcome the world. And if you're a follower of him, that means you have overcome the world too. So you should be encouraged by that. And then in Revelation 12, verse 10 says, Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Salvation and strength. No, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who has accused them before God day and night has what? A little louder. He's been cast down. That's the devil. He's been cast down. He's the accuser of the brethren. So we're on the winning side, even though these little foxes are still trying to spoil the vine, even though we're still dealing with weakness in our life and maybe even feeling shame over it because there's some kind of recurring bad behavior in our lives that's destru destructive, bad behavior. You know, and you think, well, no, I'm, I'm functioning okay. I'm getting by. Well, God doesn't want you to just get by. He wants you to be free of curses over your life and know how to break those curses. So what, what's, our, what's some of the, well, I can't, I can't not read verse 11. And we could put our names in here. And Peter overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb, by the word of his testimony, and by loving his own life not even unto death. <laughs> so you need to remind the devil of that one. We have overcome. In this world, Jesus said, you may have troubles, but be at peace, man, because I have overcome the world. And Satan, you've been cast down. It's already in the book. You've been cast down. And I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony, and loving my life, not even unto death. If certain things have to be crucified on that cross daily, that means he wants us constantly doing a detox and flushing stuff out. All right? So I'll give you an example. I already talked about this verse. Hosea 8, 7 is where, in, at least in the New Living, it says, they have planted the wind and they will harvest the whirlwind. All right? So works both ways, blessing and curses. You bless somebody, you get a bigger blessing back. You curse, you get a bigger curse back, okay? So I, which side do you want to be on? That's about as obvious as you can get, right? I want to be obedient because the blessing comes from obedience. That's right what it says in Deuteronomy 28, right at the beginning. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if what? Read it. If you obey. It's got the same verse? Oh, you didn't get there yet. All right, I'm, I'm racing ahead. No wonder you're not answering. <laughs> well, you're not prophetic enough. See, that's, that's what I hear all the time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to bring shame. <laughs> you will experience all these blessings if you obey. obey the Lord your God. Now, boy, that sounds easy, but it's not so easy, is it? Because we got all kinds of justifications in our mind about why. Yeah, but, God. Yeah, but. I know your word says this, but. Not a, not a, not a good idea. Probably a really bad idea. But that, there it is, real clear. You obey the Lord, you get blessed. Verse 15, but if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and don't obey all the commandments and decrees which I'm giving you today, then all these what? 
curses will come and overwhelm you. All right, so you could say, well, that's Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. We're in the New Dispensation now, and that doesn't happen anymore. And believe me when I tell you, do I wish that was true? <laughs> do we wish that was true? You have no idea how many hours in the counseling room we've spent, in the la not, not me nearly as much as the rest of the team, and they deserve a hand, let me tell you, for the amount of time they've spent in the counseling room. I'm curious, how many of you have gotten some freedom would you mind just standing up and so other people could see if you've gotten some freedom in, in the counseling room or going through possessing your vessel? Or, I mean, there was a whole lot of people standing up here, and that was not easy work, let me tell you. They were waiting and listening and hearing the Lord and waiting and listening and hearing the Lord and taking authority over things and maybe not seeing a full response right away. You could be seated. But, boy, aren't you glad for tenacity and a willingness to come to work every day knowing you're going to be dealing with this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but God. Yeah, but God. Greater than all this stuff, the devil has been cast down. Blessing and curses. All right. And then it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 14, the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. That will be the next slide. Go to the next one. The one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. Are you happy about that? That Jesus was raised, and now when we are raised, he's going to present us. Whew, I like that. Verse 16, therefore we don't lose heart. Though outwardly our physical body might be wasting away, inwardly what happens, we're being renewed day by day. And I just love this language. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And another version says, our light and momentary afflictions. See, that curse that you're dealing with is a little fox that's trying to spoil the vine. It might be having consequences, but God is greater. And Lord, I'm pressing in. I'm going to fast and pray. I'm seeing patterns in my family line. I want them broken. If there's an area that I'm being disobedient and I just don't realize it, show me. Because I want to shut the door to that thing.